We're now joined by Ladipo Johnson, spokesperson of the new Nigeria People's Party, NNPP. Good morning, Mr. Johnson, and welcome to Nigeria Decides 2023. Good morning to you all. Good morning. Well, we've just spoken to our correspondent in Kano, where your party has won the state. I'm talking about, we're asking about the mood. I'd like to just ask about your assessment, your party's assessment of the um, election thus far. Are you satisfied with how well the NNPP has fared in states um, across that have been already um, called, that have been announced? Uh, are there other states you're looking to gain a bit more traction? You were said to be one of the four frontliners, but in terms of the results, um, the numbers aren't very encouraging, at least from our perspective. I don't know if that's satisfactory with the NNPP. What's your general assessment? Well, um, the first thing I'll say is that um, hopefully by tomorrow, the party will release its official position um, because we have um, a national committee, the presidential candidate and other senior members of the party coming together today in Abuja to look at the reports from um, various states. Well, personally, um, from where I'm sitting, um, I won't say that um, it is encouraging in the sense that um, there are many, many issues that are uh, begging for answers. Uh, as far as a lot of us are concerned, there was a systemic, systemic rigging against the NMPP around the country. The first issue we were battling with all morning on election day was the fact that people were calling from all parts of the country saying that the, the party was not on the ballot. And... Um, at the end of the day, we saw that it was because we had an illegible um, logo um, on the ballot papers. Um, I still haven't determined whether it was different from area to area but, or whether it was printed all in one spot. But whichever way it was, the logo was not legible to the people, not properly legible. Um, it's a map of Nigeria with a basket of fruits. In between the basket hardly showed um, the fruits or what have you that was that the other thing of course was that um, the NNPP um, acronym wasn't there um, now um, there are all sorts of legal arguments about that but my question um, is that um, if it isn't there at all and you say it's not meant to be there how come you knew it had to come under the Labour Party um, alphabetically. So there are many things. Now, um, regarding the agents around the country, um, as, well, I was in Lagos during the exercise. Um, for instance, in, um, in some local governments, you had agent tags with the same name. F for instance, if you had a Ladikbo Johnson in polling units 001, in all the polling units, you're Ladipo Johnson, Ladipo Johnson. And then when we said, OK, just take it and go to the polling units, you now had a lot of the units where it seems that um, maybe there was some form of collusion. They were able to say to the agents, well, how, how, well, you're Ladipo Johnson, let's see your voter's card, let's see an ID. And of course, it was different. And they had to chase away uh, quite a few of our agents. So there were so many things that were unsettling. The good thing, anyway, is that we participated despite and in spite of the harassment and what I claim to be systemic, a systemic form of rigging against the party, which you obviously had occurred, began to occur way before the elections. Um, at least we participated. And um, unfortunately, there was violence and everything. But we thank God that um, some sort of process happened and so, 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 um, some sort of participation occurred. Well, we need clarity on the position of your party with regard to the uh, collision and announcement of results. Because despite all these issues that you have raised, it is a fact that yesterday, when the agents of uh, some other parties, the ADP, 
the uh, PDP and others, uh, including Labour Party, decided to stage a walkout at the National Coalition Center. The NMPP was one of those 13 other political parties that said, we support INEC. The uh, announcement of results should continue. So, obviously, uh, the NMPP doesn't have any issue uh, with, uh, you know, the collation of results. Or is it that you are not aware that On your party, party supported INEC yesterday and refused to walk out? On the contrary, sir. Um, I wouldn't say that we're in support. Any right-thinking, no right-thinking person would be in support of what the charade that has gone on. Uh, let us start from there. No right-thinking person. Now, the agent of the NNPP, in his um, maturity, decided that at that stage, um, we were still getting um, information from different parts of the country. And we try not to jump on bandwagon um, issues or what have you. I'm not saying the PDP and the LP do not have a point. Um, possibly if I were the one in the room, I would have jumped up, I would have said more than um, all of them said together. But um, the fact remains that it is a party and we have to come to a collective decision. And we come to this decision by looking at the facts on the ground. But to, to, from, from my point of view, no one, except those who have benefited from the illegality and from the um, sham that has gone on, um, would actually support the um, transmission and uploading of results as it has um, occurred thus far. This election has taken us back to pre-2015. INEC has failed totally, as far as I'm concerned. And um, I believe that there's um, collusion between them and some other people. In fact, I will go as far, personally, as saying as the security agents as well, some of the security agents as well, colluded. Where I was in Surulere, in, in Lagos, yeah, I was there when ballot boxes were, when a, the ballot box was um, attacked. And it was convenient that after those boys had gone away in those small buses that they call Korokwe in Lagos, after they got away with it, then the police drove in in a nice um, mellow manner and everything. And it happened in different areas. And each time it was a presidential ballot box that they went for. So there's a system to it and we shouldn't fool ourselves. That is what has happened. And I doubt, I mean, I will be in the meeting with um, the, um, the party hierarchy. And I'll let them know what went on in Lagos at least. It was a sham. And I can go on to tell you what went on in our areas of strength the night before the elections as well, with the Arewa communities, etc. cetera. Okay. So uh, we don't need to fool ourselves. It okay. is, it is a, a playbook that we have experienced for 20 years in Lagos. Okay, Mr. Larry Johnson, real quickly, I'd also like to Yes, sir. Talk about the tech a little bit. The fact that most of the results being uploaded, I'm not sure if you're taking the time to see it. Some of the states, take for instance Lagos, you see a result from Nasarawa in Lagos. You see all sorts of discrepancy exactly. <laughs> here and there as regards you know, the process. What would you like to say about this discrepancy? And I'm not sure INEC has not even said anything about it yet. Uh, this was part of the points being raised yesterday. Rufa. Yeah. Yes, um, sorry. It, the whole thing is a joke. You know, we like to fool ourselves in this country. They say, oh, let there be calm and everything. But you see that madman, whoever is a madman, there, there was a, sorry, let me just divert. Winston Churchill, before he became prime minister, after World War I, he was saying um, the argument was whether Britain should arm itself. There were some, because of the World War, they didn't want them to have arms. And they were saying no to that. And he made a speech in Parliament. I think it was before he became Prime Minister. And he said that, look, we have to prepare. We have to be armed. If no sane person would come and attack you 
Of course, Hitler was on the rise at that time in Germany. No sane person will come to attack you. But when they come to attack you, do you say, no, wait, there, sh there should be peace? And you start to talk to them and negotiate with them? You don't now look at what is happening to Putin and, um, and Ukraine. So the bottom line, I'm not talking about physical attack, is that Nigerians should know, and we should stop fooling ourselves, and our pastors should stop preaching to us that, oh, take it easy. We will take, you don't take things easy, because these people that keep rigging, that have this template, will continue to do that. They'll continue to do that. So, Rufai, to answer your question, the total joke is a farce. How can you tell us you're uploading a result for Amu Odofi or for Ebuti, I think it was Amu Odofi, and then you see Nasarawa results there. Others, you click, you open, and you see how the paper had been muti mutilated, um, tipex, crossings. It's a joke. So I don't know what we're still talking about. But as I said, our own position will be made um, the official Yes, I'm a spokesperson, but uh, I have to follow due procedure. Our official position will be made known by tomorrow, or by tonight, anyway. Okay, some of those things you have uh, described, some people call it human error. And uh, after all, technology is not foolproof. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but let me ask you. We've heard from uh, former President Tolusha Gwambasunjo, who says, in those places where beavers failed, the elections should be canceled and maybe election uh, risk I do in those places. We have heard from uh, General Abdul Salami Abubakar, former head of state, who says, well, he's calling for peace and calm, and that INEC should listen to the grievances of the various stakeholders. In the meantime, INEC chairman says, if you have proof, bring it. Otherwise, let us conclude our process, and we can review it later. Well, that will mean going to court. So what's your reaction? to these latest interventions and positions? Well, um, I, I have read um, President Olusegun Obasanjo's letters. Um, and, um, I'd say, I dare say I support what he said. I would have gone further, maybe because the, I'm younger and there's blood um, rushing um, in my veins. Um, I would even have gone further. But I think that um, the, any legacy that could be left by the chairman of INEC is in tatters. Um, if he's able to retrace his steps, yes. And, uh, but I know that most likely they will not. Because as, I've, as far as I'm concerned, all this is uh, malice aforethought. They knew what they were doing. They know what they are doing, still doing. You understand, uploading manually and everything. And they trust that people like General Abdul Salam Abubakar, Yakubu Gowon, and co, and the international um, um, observers we have will keep telling us to be peaceful and what have you. So they trust that that system is in place. The imams and the pastors will come out and the bishops and say, let's trust in God and everything. And the um, candidates who have benefited will say to you that, oh, is the system uh, in 20, 2007, the election was worse. But the thing there is that we're talking about today. And unfortunately, if you look at the economy, you look at the situation of the country, we're just, um, we're struggling. And this will set us back. This would have been the only legacy, positively, that this government would have left in its eight years. But unfortunately, it has failed. Look at the joke. You are the president of the country. You, you know that your electoral act says you should stop campaigning. And you and your attorney general vote and lift up your ballot in a way that would be seen. Now, once you see that, you are sending a message on behalf of that person that you voted for. Not just maybe within them, Selves to say that, oh, I voted for you. Your message is to millions of Nigerians that this is where we're going. It doesn't make sense. Oh. After spending some 300 billion um, naira on, 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 on the elections. So the entire thing is a farce. All right, Mr. But Johnson. Then there's a system in place 
that lets these things um, go on. And the last thing to um, um, the question, sorry, sorry, Ayo. The last thing I want to say is that when it goes through that process, where what the INEC um, um, chairman is saying, oh, we will review it and go to court or whatever. Not, I'm telling you, majority of Nigerians, I'm a legal practitioner, I'm sorry to say, do not have confidence in the Supreme Court or in the judicial system. It's a sad thing to say, but that is the situation at the moment. All right. Mr. Johnson, let's take a few steps back to what you said, because I just want us to dissect it a, a bit. Now, the APC had raised an yeah. alarm through a statement from its spokesperson that they should caution the Labour Party and the PDP for making insightful statements that would, you know, then consequently uh, lead to protests or perhaps an un you know, unrest amongst young people in Nigeria. Now, you're saying that the religious leader should not even preach peace at this point. Let everybody just, if I am interpreting you well, so that we are clear, because it's I'm, a very, that's why I wanted you to be clear. Because I wanted to suggest perhaps they should have joined you to that suggestion or included the NNPP as well to um, be careful about the statements they make. So what are the options available? Here you are saying that you, there's, you, you lost confidence in INEC's um, credibility, in terms of the election's credibility. You're saying you've lost confidence in the credibility of the courts. And you're asking young people to arise and stand up and defend. Well, not your words exactly, but you're saying that it's not time to you're, start you're, preaching you're peace. You're putting words in my mouth. That's why I said you should please clarify you're, you're a bit putting better. Words in my <laughs> please go ahead and clarify your statement. What but what I you did said, say was that the, we should not what, be preaching peace at this time. What I go said, mm -mm, I didn't say shouldn't be preaching peace. I said they will come out and preach peace. You said this is not the time There's for that. There's a system in our culture. Yeah, well, let people talk. I'm not saying go onto the streets. I'm saying let people talk. Let them say the things that are wrong. Do not cover this thing with any modicum of um, respectability. It's raw rigging. There's no respectability to it. So when I see people sitting down and saying, well, you know, the Yorubas say things like, uh, all these things are just a joke and will continue to meander as a country, as a people. So what we're saying is that do not fool us. If you are imposing someone, don't waste 300 plus billion. Tell us that this person is taking over from you. If we're ready to accept it, we accept it. But Nigerians, especially the younger ones, I'm young, I'm 54 now, but those who are 23, 30 something, I don't think they'll take the nonsense we have taken. And we don't want to be swept away by them. Because if something like that happens, you won't even, they don't know who is who. It's everybody. So we should stop taking the people of Nigeria for granted. No one is a fool. We are not fools. We know what happened. We know what is happening. And unfortunately, uh, the playbook is there. We know what will happen, and you go to court, and you'll be there, and then there's a technicality, and so, so, and so, so. And of course, the man who, has, who is culpable, and yes, I'm pronouncing them guilty already. I know I shouldn't. The man who is culpable will easily say to you, no, don't fight, go to court, follow the system. Because they know that the way, the way and manner that they tried to... Um, circumvent the system. They'll try to circumvent all those processes, or frustrate all the processes that anyone who is rightly aggrieved, any candidate who is rightly aggrieved, will try to take. So I'm, I'm sorry I'm speaking this way. There are passions flowing around the country, okay. and um, I hate to be taken as a fool. Okay, I mean, there are passions flowing around the country, but we have to still temper things down because when you look at the states, it's Definitely. only one country we've got. And Definitely. the Yorubas have a saying that, <laughs> what it means is that when you have a headache, uh, yeah, cutting know. the head off is not the solution. And this is the only country we've got, so we have to temper things down. But I asked this question earlier on from Mr. Dili Faratimi, and I'll ask you this question again. I said, in a country where we are having a contention between an eventuality or probable eventuality of pyrrhic victory and a fall on hope. 
then where is the shining path to the future? Well, um, thank you, Rufai, and thanks for your um, proverb. Um, where, <laughs> unfortunately, look at the issues that you need to um, tackle as government. Um, insecurity, the economy, et cetera, et cetera. How can you tackle these issues with a divided country? It, it's impossible because when you, you have people already in different parts of the country, some calling for um, nationhood, you understand? You have the problem with the bandits, etc. For instance, if you want to handle insecurity with bandits and insurgents, you need intelligence from people in areas and villages where these people are. Will the people support a government that they feel was foisted or of, on, upon them? The answer is no. So a lot of people, but I know that these people, when I say these people, I'm talking about my friends in the party that seems to um, be sailing ahead. I know them well. I have many brothers and sisters there. They don't give a damn about what majority of the, the way the ship of the, the country is sailing. All they care about is what is in it for them. So we, we have that problem. And they have weaponized poverty. That's one of the things I ought to have said earlier. They weaponized poverty. So most of the people that we're talking about, the, the poor, the struggling Nigerians, they, they're there, there was no cash around they, they, um, for weeks, and they, they were getting even poorer. So they were able to snap them up for peanuts. And you, when you talk to them, they don't understand it. They look at you and say, you're a lawyer. You travel anytime you want to travel. But they don't know, or they seem to forget because of the hunger and of poverty of the mind, and I'm not insulting Nigerians. They, 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 seem to for, they seem to forget what they faced in seven, eight years, and, uh, and then just accept something and, and do whatever they do. So it is a well-rehearsed um, and well-formed template, um, Rufai. And um, I tell you, if, if things are not corrected, either by um, the suggestion of the former president, and um, INEC says, OK, let me look at this thing properly. The results coming in are, being, are being coming in manually. And we had said that we would do it the other way. And there's no trust, no confidence in what is happening with the process. Then um, if that isn't done or something else, then you would have a totally, totally unacceptable government to what I would term maybe the majority of Nigerians. Because if you look at the turnout, and you look at, we can, we can go into that later when we have all the results, you see that these um, um, figures are not, when you have about 90 million um, registered, these figures do not show that the people of the country, uh, um, in uh, majority of their mind support. Well, Johnson, first on our side, did I hear you saying that at 54, you are a young man? Uh, well, you wait till uh, <laughs> some of these the young... PDP, so, the PDP had a youth leader <laughs> at 60-something. <laughs> you, you wait till some of these young persons begin to call you daddy, you know, because, you know, to many young persons, once a man is over 50, they start pushing you to go and retire because uh, yeah. you have become a daddy. Anyway, that's an aside. I exactly. want to ask you, don't you think that basically at the end of the day, given the way the results have been uh, coming out, that Kwan Kwan So, your candidate, may well be remembered for having played the role of a spoiler in this election? Because previously there was this talk that, oh, if Kwan Kwan So could join this party or that party and uh, support one party or the other, it could strengthen the prospects of the uh, party. But the biggest news, 
uh, is as suspected uh, that uh, your party has done very well in Kano, but to what effect? So, how exactly. will your party feel well, considering that, told, okay, you spoiled the game for some other people, uh, so what's the significance of that, you know, Kano victory without the required spread so far? Um, um, well, the, the thing there, it is only, um, and take it as I say it, I'm not um, insulting people. It's only the ill-informed or uninformed um, about what happened all through um, the country, especially in places where, <laughs> to us anyway, especially in places where we knew that um, Rabiu Konkozo and the NMPP had done a great deal of work. It is only those who do not know that that will say, oh, at the end of the day, yes, you took Kanu, but if you had joined up with someone, um, the results will be different. It's, um, uh, it's only people who do not know and who do not want to recognize the fact that this, or th this election, the first one, is a total sham in most of the states, in virtually all the states. Too many irregularities. Um, even Kanu that we're talking about, Doctor, even Kanu, they had to fight. They, in many places, um, INEC didn't even come out till about 1.30. So they tried to deal with us even in Kanu, even in Kanu North. They announced uh, a result that shouldn't have been announced. Yes, we have to go to court, but that thing that we felt, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not holding brief. If you want me to talk about the Labour Party, about the PDP, I can tell you about what everyone suffered. But I, I am for the NNPP. These things that we felt around are real and they affected us a great deal. So I wouldn't say the intention was not to act as spoiler to anyone. That was not the intention. The intention was to go to the people talk to them, and then have it translated into votes. Now, when majority of your supporters don't even see you on the ballot, you begin to wonder. We could talk to some people, but how about the people in all these areas, the rural areas and what have you? So the whole thing is a farce. But I, I tell you, um, no, the NMPP never intended to, and I don't think we, we did act as spoiler to anyone. We went all the way, and um, in elections to come, um, the same thing will happen, because we have a message for the people of Nigeria, and um, we'll keep preaching that message, especially to those who do not have, those who are at the bottom of the ladder. That is the message of the NMPP. Un unfortunately, a lot of them have been impoverished by government policies, and these people impoverish them and then come and give them peanuts during the elections. But we'll keep preaching the message to them. All right, well, thank you very much, Mr. Ladiqua Johnson. Uh, we will be letting you go very shortly, but very just in one word. Lessons learned from this election cycle as we look ahead to the governorship elections in two weeks. What lessons would you say the NNPP you can pick from this cycle? Don't trust INEC, don't trust the police, don't trust the security agencies. Nigerians um, cannot rely on them. They have all colluded. And um, as far as we're concerned, that's, um, well, as far as I am concerned, the party hasn't made its own um, position known. As far as I'm concerned, from what I have seen, it must have been, you know? I, the next thing, they'll start running after you and say, bring the proof, bring the proof. There's no proof, it's politics here. And we saw what happened in the field police officers sitting when you have thugs saying, if you are Igbo, leave this place. If you are going to, not going to vote APC, leave this place. And the police just sat there watching them. So what else do you need? What other proof do you need? As I said, it's a farce, it's a joke, and I'm sorry that we've wasted this much money on INEC. President Buhari should simply have gone for a coronation. All right, thank you We're very much. Fools. Thank you, Mr. Ladipo Johnson. Thank you very much. Spokesperson, the new Nigeria People's Thank Party, you. NNPP.